Hello everyone, Ilya Marchenko here, your favorite tennis YouTuber. Last week the whole tennis community was following the qualification event for Angros. 128 men and women were competing for a chance to play in the main draw. Meanwhile, the Challenger Tour for the second consecutive week was visiting Shimkent. Shimkent is a city at the south of Kazakhstan, the homeland of Borat, with a population of almost 1 million, and it's the third biggest city in the whole of Kazakhstan. I'm my name is Borat. I like you. I like sex. It's nice. Tournaments there are usually very well organized. Enough course for practice, food is good, and prices are cheap. For me, there were only two problems the quality of the courts and the fact that I haven't met the famous sister of Borat. This is Natalia. It was a regular ATP Challenger 80 event, so we had a regular draw of 32. That means that minimum of 32 professional tennis players decided to skip the clay court major and play Shimkin instead. You might wonder why. My guess is that they decided to boycott the Grand Slam in Paris because Rangeros let Russian and Belarusian players compete. So the guys who played Shimkent wanted to show their support to Ukraine and their dissatisfaction with this position. That's my guess, but I wasn't sure, so I decided to ask. So could you introduce yourself, because uh, maybe some of my viewers have no idea who you are. Uh, I'm Ergi Kirkin from Turkey. My name is Filip Giano and I'm from Romania. Hi, uh, I am Mukun Sasikumar. I am from Chennai, India. Uh, I am a good friend of Ilya since the last maybe four years, since I started playing well and uh, playing the same tournaments as him. And this is uh, my first interview with him, what I count as one of the biggest achievements of my life because I feel I've earned something. Great success! So, so it yeah, it's very, very, it's, uh, I'm everyone's favorite tennis YouTuber, so yeah, you earned a lot. My name is David Niklas Einel, I'm from Romania and I'm a tennis player. Introduce yourself because some of my viewers maybe have no idea who you are. I can imagine, I'm not that famous, so uh, my name is Robin Hasse. Hasse really taking the wide position just to help with the angle, the heavy kicker, worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Viktor Jurasovic, one and only from Norway. In case you didn't hear about me, it's probably because you have not seen me anywhere. So you're from Norway, right? So same as uh, Kasper Ruud. How does it feel like uh, to be in the shadow of such uh, a great talent and uh, such uh, such a legend? I mean, since since I'm in the shadow, it uh, doesn't get too hot. You know, you can stay cool all the time. You don't get too sunburned. You're just uh, behind the scenes, you know, kind of like like Batman a little bit. Nobody knows who you are, but uh, you're still there, creeping around. What do you think about Shimkent and uh, Kazakhstan so far about this tournament? Yeah, I like it a lot. I didn't have time to really visit or something. I just in the hotel, tennis club and some restaurants, but so far it's been nice. I, I liked it a lot. Well, it's actually nice. The weather's been good. I've been here before as well, so I know the surroundings. So it's always nice when you know it before. Uh, I think in general, Kazakhstan is a very unique place when it comes to how it looks to somebody's eyes when they are seeing other cities in the world because I still feel they are 30 years behind uh, in many things for, f on the good side I see many less kids on the mobile phone they are still playing a lot outdoors the cars are still old and uh, it still feels like you know we are still in the good era of, of this planet in the 1980s 90s and, and especially when, uh, for somebody like me who's seeing the very fast cities in the world, mostly United States, Europe, to come and uh, come and uh, see a place in this world which is so chilled out, so relaxed, uh, so laid back and not too technology oriented is very good to see. To be honest, I like it. It's a bit too hot for my preferences, but it's nice, it's okay. Shimkent, uh, you know, Bar Villa, the restaurant, it's actually top shelf. For all of you who have never been here, uh, if you do come to Shinkent, definitely look up Bar Villa. You'll have a, a great dinner, good food, and then you can go back to uh, <laughs> back to the whatever you're sleeping. Uh, it has been very interesting. Uh, I don't speak any Kazakh or Russian, so uh, it's very difficult to order food. Uh, I tried uh, in a few restaurants and uh, with Google Translate, pictures, uh, it was very funny, some really funny situations. Um, and 
uh, I have to say we we had we are enjoying uh, our time here. Uh, what about uh, women in Kazakhstan? Uh, I mean, have you met uh, the sister of Borat yet? She is number four prostitute in all of Kazakhstan. Nice. Uh, not yet, and I'm very disappointed because uh, well, he he is always talking about her, and uh, I yeah I I have wanted to to meet her, but uh, I think she's very busy. Very nice, very nice. Uh, not really. I've been to the club and to the courts only, so I've been practicing and playing matches. Pretty serious. Very, very professional. Yeah. I think they're very hospitable and and beautiful, of course, uh, no doubt. But uh, I think they're super friendly, always ready to to help you around the city. To even the day I landed, the there was a lady who helped me get a taxi in the airport. Uh, in general, I feel the people are extremely helpful here when it comes to certain things, I, which is not something you see all over the world. No, man, it's terrible. This this club is is put outside the, outside everything. No chance for us to connect with some girls in the in here. Okay, but you wanted to, huh? We always want to, but we need we need time for this and to go out. Bora's sister? Bora the movie? Ah, uh, no, no, no. But I, I didn't. I really just stayed in my room, fitness, and not, I didn't do anything. So I don't really know. Maybe it's good, but I don't know. I think your coach is not subscribed to my channel, so you can tell the truth. Actually, mm, no, no, I don't know. But I don't, I don't know if he's subscribed or not. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, unfortunately. Uh, she was not on Tinder, so. Yeah, but like, man, but I, uh, I'm really sorry for you. Uh, I was, uh, I was hoping. I, I, my expectations were low, but you know, you can you can always dream, right? Although Kazakhstan, a glorious country, it have a problem too. What do you think uh, about course about uh, clay course here? Um, I think I like clay in general a lot. So, and of course, I grew up in India, so I don't think any court in the world can be much more challenging than than where I grew <laughs> where I grew up so uh, for me these courts are world class to be honest mm, in Bucharest where I live and I practice is also not like incredible so I think it's nice for me I like it's the same like in Bucharest um, the courts they bounce a lot because of the altitude but yeah clay in general a lot of bad bounces as you probably know uh, but yeah I think the courts the groundsmen do a good job so I actually heard uh, somebody told me that uh, when the tournament here finishes, they're going to destroy everything, build new ones. So hopefully they can do uh, a worse job, maybe. For YouTube, I'm going to say I like it, but if you ask me without a camera... I don't, I don't have that many subscribers, you know, so uh, you can tell the truth. Uh, then they were, the courts were full of holes, man, and the bounces were terrible. <laughs> Do you think they are on par with uh, courts at French Open? Uh, I only played French Open juniors, but I think they are better in Shimkent. I think Roland girls have to stretch a little bit. Uh, you know, Shimkent uh, standard is a very, yeah. very high standard, you know. I have never played Roland Garros, so I... Oh, you I, never played? No, I haven't played Roland Garros, but uh, I guess so, probably. I don't know, you have to tell me, you have played many Roland Garros. Yeah, they're much better there. Well, I think yeah, the, you mentioned uh, French Open. I think we shouldn't compare. Uh, it's been uh, quite difficult uh, to 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 let's say hit the ball clean. Uh, you 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 feel like your back and your shoulder after matches because you, you make these funny movements all the time. Especially at our age. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we don't need actually the bad bounces to yeah, to feel the true. body. But uh, no, it, it has been quite difficult. Uh, but I guess everyone has has these difficulties. So it's uh, how you deal with it. But then my main question: uh, Why have you decided to boycott Roland Garros and come here? Is it to support Ukraine and because uh, French Open uh, let Russian and Belarusian players play? Well, I'm I'm definitely supporting uh, Ukraine because uh, I think any war uh, shouldn't shouldn't be there. I wish I I was boycotting it uh, because of that reason, but I have just been not playing that good, so my ranking is just just not good enough. So yeah, so you just suck, huh? <laughs> I kind of do at the moment, yeah.
Exactly, man. And to be honest, I like more the flights that are longer than two hours from Bu Bucharest to Paris. I prefer to go to, to Istanbul and then fly six hours to Schinken. I would love to say that's the reason, but I think the Roland Garros also boycotted me because uh, my ranking is not good enough at the moment. Uh, there's simply not enough money in the qualities, you know. Uh, I make far more coming here to be barely main draw and, uh, you know, struggling for double rounds and everything. and. Uh, Eating kebabs for lunch, you know. Uh, In Baravila. Yes, uh, it's definitely more, uh, more, uh, more prestige in this. In, in this tournament than in, in Paris, you know. Well, that uh, doesn't make sense, but okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>